chapter two parts three and three a of a contribution to the critique of political economy by karl marx translated by nahum isaac stone this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter two part three money money as distinguished from coin the result of the circulation process c to m to c forms the starting point of the circulation process m to c to m that is the exchange of money for commodity in order to exchange commodity for money in the form c to m to c commodity forms the starting and final points of the movement in the form m to c to m money plays that part in the former case money is the medium of exchange of commodities in the latter the commodity helps money to become money money which appears merely as a means of circulation in the first form becomes an end in the second form while commodity which appeared first as the end now becomes but a means since money is itself the result of a circulation c to m to c the result of circulation appears at the same time as its starting point in the form m to c to m while in the case of c to m to c the interchange of matter constituted the real import of the process the form of the commodity resulting from this first process constitutes the import of the second process m to c to m in the form c to m to c the two extreme members are commodities of the same value but qualitatively different use values their mutual exchange c to c constitutes actual interchange of matter in the form m to c to m the two extremes are gold and at the same time gold of equal value to exchange gold for a commodity in order to exchange the commodity for gold or if we consider the final result m to m to exchange gold for gold seems absurd but if we translate the formula m to c to m enter the expression to buy in order to sell which means nothing but to exchange gold for gold through an intervening movement we recognize at once the prevailing form of capitalist production in actual practice however people do not buy in order to sell but they buy cheap in order to sell dear money is exchanged for a commodity in order to exchange the same commodity for a larger amount of money so that the extremes m m are if not qualitatively then quantitatively different such a quantitative difference presupposes the exchange of non-equivalents yet commodity and money as such are only opposite forms of the same commodity that is they are different forms of the same magnitude of value the circuit m to c to m thus conceals under the forms of money and commodity more highly developed relations of production and is but a reflection within the sphere of simple circulation of a movement of a more advanced character money as distinguished from the medium of circulation must therefore be developed from the direct form of circulation of commodities c to m to c gold that is the specific commodity which serves as a measure of value and a medium of circulation becomes money without any further assistance on the part of society in england where silver is neither the measure of value nor the prevailing medium of circulation it does not become money just as gold in holland as soon as it had been dethroned as a measure of value ceased to be money 
a commodity thus becomes money only in its combined capacity of a measure of value and medium of circulation or the unity of the measure of value and medium of circulation is money as such a unity however gold has a separate existence independent of its existence in the two functions as a measure of value it is only ideal money and ideal gold as a mere medium of circulation it is symbolic money and symbolic gold but in its plain metallic bodily form gold is money or money is real gold let us now consider for a moment the commodity gold when it is in a state of rest and plays the part of money in its relation to other commodities all commodities represent in their prices a certain quantity of gold that is to say they are merely imaginary gold or imaginary money representatives of gold just as on the other hand money in the form of a token of value appeared as a mere representative of prices of commodities footnote a genovese lezioni di economia civile seventeen sixty five page two eighty one custody parte mode l eight not only are precious metals tokens of things but vice versa things are tokens of gold and silver End of footnote since all commodities are thus but imaginary money money is the only real commodity contrary to commodities which only represent the independently existing exchange value that is universal social labor or abstract wealth gold is the material form of abstract wealth through its use value every commodity by its relation to some particular want expresses only one aspect of material wealth but one side of wealth money however satisfies every want since it can be directly converted into the object of any want its own use value is realized in the endless series of use values which form its equivalents in its virgin metallic state it holds locked up all the material wealth which lies unfolded in the world of commodities thus while commodities represent in their prices the universal equivalent or abstract wealth viz gold the latter represents in its use value the use values of all commodities gold is therefore the bodily representative of material wealth it is the précis de tous les choses bois guillebert the compendium of the wealth of society at one and the same time it is the direct incarnation of universal labor in its form and the aggregate of all concrete labor in its substance it is universal wealth individualized footnote petty gold and silver are universal wealth political arithmetic l c page two forty two end of footnote as a medium of circulation it underwent all kinds of injury was clipped and even reduced to the condition of a mere symbolic paper rag as money it is restored to its golden glory footnote e misselden free trade or the means to make trade flourish etc london sixteen twenty two the natural matter of commerce is merchandise which merchants from the end of trade have styled commodities the artificial matter of commerce is money which hath obtained the title of sinews of war and of state money though it be in nature and time after merchandise yet forasmuch as it is now in use become the chief page seven he compares his own treatment of merchandise and money with the manner of old jacob who blessing his grandchildren crossed his hands and laid his right hand on the younger and his left hand on the elder l c bois guillebert page three ninety five three ninety nine in the footnote from a serve it becomes a lord from a mere understrapper it rises to the position of lord of commodities footnote bois guillebert l c page three ninety five part three a hoarding gold separates itself as money from the process of circulation whenever 
a commodity interrupts the process of its metamorphosis and remains in its form of a gold chrysalis this occurs every time a sale is not immediately followed by purchase the independent isolation of gold as money is thus a material expression of the disintegration of the process of circulation or of the metamorphosis of commodities into two separate acts independent of each other the coin itself becomes money as soon as its course is interrupted in the hands of the seller who takes it in exchange for his commodity it is money and not coin as soon as it passes out of his hands it is again coin everybody is a seller of the one commodity which he produces but a buyer of all other commodities which he needs for his existence in society while his selling is determined by the labor time required for the production of his commodity his buying is determined by the continual renewal of the wants of life in order to be able to buy without having sold anything he must sell without buying in fact the circulation process c to m to c is a dynamic unity of sale and purchase only in so far as it constitutes at the same time the constant process of its separation in order that money should flow continuously as coin coin must constantly coagulate as money the continuous flow of coin depends on its constant accumulations in the form of reserve funds of coin which spring up throughout the sphere of circulation and form sources of supply the formation and distribution disappearance and reformation of these reserve funds is constantly changing their existence constantly disappears their disappearance constantly exists adam smith expressed this never-ceasing transformation of coin into money and of money into coin by saying that every owner of commodities must always keep in supply besides the particular commodity which he sells a certain quantity of the universal commodity with which he buys we saw that in the process c to m to c the second member m to c splits up into a series of purchases which do not take place at once but at intervals of time so that one part of m circulates as money while the other rests as money money is in the, that case only suspended coin and the separate parts of the circulating mass of coins appear now in one form now in another constantly changing this first transformation of the medium of circulation into money represents therefore but a technical aspect of money circulation footnote in the first halt of the perpetuum mobile that is in the suspension of the function of money as a medium of circulation Bois at once suspects its independent existence from commodities money he says must be in constant motion it can be money only by being mobile but as soon as it becomes motionless all is lost what he overlooks is that this halt constitutes the condition of its movement what he really wants is that the value form of commodities should appear merely in the transitory form of their change of matter but should never become and then in itself in the footnote the primitive form of wealth is that of a surplus or superabundance that is that part of the products which are not immediately required as use values or the possession of such products whose use value falls outside the sphere of mere necessaries when considering the transition of commodity into money we saw that this surplus or superabundance of products constitutes the proper sphere of exchange at a low stage of development of production superfluous products become exchangeable products or commodities the adequate form of this surplus is gold and silver the first form in which wealth as abstract social wealth is preserved commodities can not only be stored up in the form of gold and silver that is in the substance of money but gold and silver are wealth in preserved form while every use value performs its service as such by being consumed that is destroyed the use value of gold as money consists in its being the bearer of exchange value in embodying universal labor time as a shapeless raw material as shapeless metal exchange value possesses an indestructible form gold or silver thus brought to rest as money forms a hoard among nations with an exclusively metallic circulation such as the ancients were hoarding is practiced universally from the individual to the state which guards its state hoard 
in more ancient times in asia and egypt these hordes under the protection of kings and priests appear rather as a mark of their power in greece and rome it was part of public policy to accumulate state hordes as the safest and most available form of surplus the quick transfer of such hordes by conquerors from one country to another and the sudden outpour of a part of these hordes into the general circulation constitute a peculiar feature of ancient economy as the incarnation of labor time gold is a pledge for its own value and since it is the embodiment of universal labor time the process of circulation pledges gold its constant role of exchange value owing to the mere fact that the owner of commodities can retain his commodity in the form of exchange value or retain the exchange value as a commodity the exchange of commodities for the purpose of retaining them in the transformed shape of gold becomes circulation's own motive the metamorphosis seta m takes place for the sake of the metamorphosis that is in order to transform it from particular natural wealth into universal social wealth instead of change of matter change of form becomes its own purpose from a mere form of the movement exchange value becomes its substance commodity is preserved as wealth as commodity only in so far as it keeps within the sphere of circulation and it keeps in that fluent state only in so far as it solidifies in the form of silver and gold it remains in the stream of circulation as its crystal at the same time gold and silver themselves become money only in so far as they do not play the part of mediums of circulation as non-mediums of circulation they become money the withdrawal of a commodity from circulation in the form of gold is therefore the only means of keeping it constantly within the sphere of circulation the owner of commodities can receive money from circulation only in return for a commodity which he gives to it constant selling continual throwing of commodities into circulation is therefore the first condition of hoarding from the standpoint of the circulation of commodities on the other hand money as a medium of circulation constantly disappears in the very process of circulation by being realized all the time in use values and becoming dissolved in fleeting pleasures it must therefore be taken out of of the all-consuming stream of circulation or the commodity must be kept up in its first metamorphosis so that money is prevented from performing its function of a means of purchase the commodity owner who has now become a hoarder must sell as much as possible and buy as little as possible as old cato had taught patrem familius vendacem non e macem esse while industry constitutes the positive condition of hoarding saving forms the negative one the less the equivalent of a commodity is withdrawn from circulation in the form of particular commodities or use values the more it is withdrawn in the shape of money or exchange value footnote the more the stock is increased in wares the more it decreaseth in treasure e misselden l c page twenty three end of footnote the acquisition of wealth in its universal form thus requires abstinence from wealth in its material reality thus the stimulating impulse for hoarding is greed the objects of which are not commodities as use values but exchange value as commodity in order to get possession of the surplus in its universal form the particular wants must be treated as so much luxury and excess thus the courts presented a report to philip the second in fifteen ninety three in which among other things was said the courts of valles dolid in the year fifteen eighty six petitioned your majesty not to allow the further importation into the kingdom of candles glassware jewellery knives and similar articles these things useless to human life come from abroad to be exchanged for gold as though the spaniards were indians the hoarder despises the worldly temporary and transitory enjoyments in his hunt after the eternal treasure which neither moth nor rust can eat which is perfectly celestial and earthly at the same time the general remote cause of our want of money is the great excess of this kingdom in consuming the commodities of foreign countries which prove to us discommodities and hindering us of so much treasure which otherwise would be brought in in lieu of those toys 
we consume amongst us that great abundance of the wines of spain of france of the rennes and of the levant the raisins of spain the currants of the levant the lawns and cambrics of Hainaults, the silks of italy the sugars and tobacco of the west indies the spices of the east indies all which are of no necessity unto us and yet are bought with ready money footnote l c p eleven through thirteen passim end of footnote in the form of gold and silver wealth is indestructible both because exchange value is preserved in the shape of indestructible metal and especially because gold and silver are prevented from becoming as mediums of circulation mere vanishing money forms of the commodity the destructible substance is thus sacrificed for the indestructible form if money is taken by means of taxation from him who spendeth the same upon eating and drinking or any other perishing commodity and the same transferred to one that bestoweth it on clothes i say that even in this case the common wealth has some little advantage because clothes do not altogether perish so soon as meats and drinks but if the same be spent in furniture of houses the advantage is yet a little more if in building of houses yet more if in improving of lands working of mines fishing etc yet more but most of all in bringing gold and silver into the country because those things are not only not perishable but are esteemed for wealth at all times and everywhere whereas other commodities which are perishable or whose value depends upon the fashion or which are contingently scarce and plentiful are wealth but pro hic et nunc footnote petty political arithmetic l c page one ninety six eighteen ninety nine edition v one page two sixty nine trans end of footnote the withdrawal of money from the stream of circulation and the saving of it from the social interchange of matter reaches its extreme form in the burying of money so that social wealth is brought as an underground indestructible treasure into a perfectly secret private relation with the owner of commodities dr bernier who stayed for some time at the court of aurangzeb at delhi tells us how the merchants especially the mohammedan heathens who control nearly all the trade and all money secretly bury their money deep in the ground being imbued with the faith that the gold and silver which they put away during their lives will serve them after death in the next world footnote francois bernier voyage continent la description des et zeta du grand mogul paris edition eighteen thirty t l comf p three twelve to three fourteen end of footnote however in so far as the asceticism of the hoarder is combined with active industry he is rather a protestant by religion and still more a puritan it cannot be denied that bearing and selling are necessary that one cannot get along without them and that one can buy like a christian especially things that serve in need and in honour for the patriarchs had also bought and sold cattle wool grain buttermilk and other goods they are gifts of god which he gives out of the earth and divides among men but foreign trade which brings over from calcutta india and other such places commodities consisting of costly silks and gold ware and spices which only serve for luxury and are of no use draining the land and the people of their money should not be tolerated if we but had a government of princes yet i do not wish to write of that now for i believe it will have to stop of itself when we have no money any longer and so will luxury and gluttony for no writing or teaching will help until want and poverty will force us footnote dr martin luther bucher von hauf kauf handel und bucher fifteen twenty four in the same passage luther says in the work quoted above misseldon wishes to retain the gold and silver at least within the confines of christendom the other foreign remote causes of the want of money are the trades maintained out of christendom to turkey persia and the east indies which trades are maintained for the most part with ready money yet in a different manner from the trades of christendom within itself for although the trades within christendom are driven with ready monies yet those monies are still contained and contained within the bounds of christendom there is indeed a fluxus and refluxus a flood and ebb of the monies of christendom traded within itself for sometimes there is more in one part of christendom sometimes there is less in another as one country wanteth and another aboundeth it cometh and goeth and whirleth about the circle of christendom but is still contained within the compass thereof 
but the money that is traded out of christendom into the parts of aforesaid is continually issued out and never returneth again page nineteen to twenty in the footnote in times of disturbance in the process of the social interchange of matter the burying of money takes place even in bourgeois societies which are at a high stage of development the social bond in its compact form is being saved from the social movement with the owner of commodities this bond is the commodity and the adequate form of the commodity is money the social nervous rerum is buried next to the body whose nerve it is the hoard would now become mere useless metal its money soul would depart from it and it would remain as the burnt ashes of circulation as its caput mortuum if it did not constantly tend to get back into circulation money or crystallized exchange value is according to its nature the form of abstract wealth but on the other hand any given sum of money is a quantitatively limited magnitude of value the quantitative limitation of exchange value is in contradiction with its qualitative universality and the hoarder conceives in it a barrier which turns in fact into a qualitative barrier as well as makes of the hoard merely a limited representative of material wealth money in its capacity of a universal equivalent appears as we have seen as a member of an equation the other member of which consists of an endless series of commodities it depends on the magnitude of the exchange value to what extent money will be realized in such an endless series that is to what degree it corresponds to the conception of it as an exchange value the automatic movement of exchange value as exchange value can only tend to its passing beyond its quantitative limits but by exceeding the quantitative limits of the hoard a new limit is created which must be removed in its turn there is no definite limit which appears as a barrier to further hoarding every limit plays that part hoard accumulation has therefore no inherent limits no inherent measure it is an endless process which finds in each successive result an impulse for a new beginning while the hoard is increased only by being preserved it is preserved only by being increased money is not only an object of the passion for riches it is the object of that passion the latter is essentially auri sacra famis the passion for riches contrary to that for special kinds of natural wealth or use values such as clothing ornaments herds etc is possible only when universal wealth has been individualized as such in a particular object and can therefore be retained in the form of a single commodity money appears then no less as an object than as a source of the passion for riches footnote pliny natural history l thirty three c fourteen into footnote the underlying fact of the matter is that exchange value is such and with it its increase become the final aim greed holds the hoard fast by not allowing the money to become a medium of circulation but the thirst for gold saves the money soul of the hoard by keeping up the lasting affinity of gold for circulation to sum up the activity of which hoards are built up resolves itself into withdrawal of money from circulation by continually repeated sales and simple hoarding or accumulation in fact it is only in the sphere of simple circulation and especially in the form of hoarding that accumulation of wealth as such takes place while as we shall see later in the case of other so-called forms of accumulation it is only a misnomer to call them by that name and mere recollection of the simple accumulation of money all other commodities are hoarded either as use values in which case the manner of storing them up is determined by the peculiarities of their use value the storing of grain for example requires special equipment the accumulation of sheep makes one a shepherd the accumulation of slaves and land creates relations of master and servant etc the accumulation of particular kinds of wealth requires special processes different from the simple act of hoarding and develops special individual traits or wealth in the form of commodities is hoarded as exchange value and in that case hoarding appears as a commercial or a specific economic operation the one who carries on such operations becomes a dealer in corn in cattle etc gold and silver are money not through some activity of the individual who accumulates it but as crystals of the process of circulation which goes on without any aid on his part he has nothing to do but to put them aside adding new weights of metal to his hoard a perfectly senseless operation which if applied to all other commodities would deprive them of all value 
footnote horse thus understands nothing of the philosophy of hoarding when he says if one buys fiddles hoards them up when bought though music study ne'er engaged his thought one lasts and all's unversed in cobbler's craft one sails for ships not doing for from aft you'd call them mad but tell me if you please how that man's case is different from these who as he gets it stows away his gain and thinks to touch a farthing were profane translated by john covington london eighteen seventy four page sixty mr senior understands the question much better since money represents all other forms of wealth it is only necessary to accumulate it to provide for oneself all kinds of wealth existing in the world l c verse two page one thirty four in the footnote our hoarder appears as a martyr of exchange value a holy ascetic crowning the metal pillar he cares for wealth only in its social form and therefore he buries it away from society he wants to have the commodity in the form in which it is always capable of entering circulation and therefore he withdraws it from circulation he dreams of exchange value and therefore does not exchange the fluid form of wealth and its petrification the elixir of life and the stone of wisdom madly haunt each other in alchemic fashion in his imaginary unlimited passion for enjoyment he denies himself all enjoyment because he wishes to satisfy all social wants he barely satisfies his elementary natural wants while holding fast to his wealth in its metallic bodily form the latter escapes him as a phantom as a matter of fact however the hoarding of money for the sake of money is the barbaric form of production for production's sake that is the development of the productive forces of social labor beyond the limits of ordinary wants the less the production of commodities is developed the more important is the first crystallization of exchange value into money or hoarding which plays therefore an important part among the ancient nations in asia until the present day and among modern agricultural nations where exchange value has not as yet taken hold of all the relations of production before taking up the consideration of the specific economic function of hoarding within the sphere of metallic circulation let us mention another form of hoarding quite apart from their aesthetic properties silver and gold commodities are convertible into money since the material of which they are made is a money material and inversely gold money and gold bullion can be converted into commodities because gold and silver constitute the material of abstract wealth the greatest display of wealth consists of the utilization of these metals as concrete use values and if the owner of commodities hides his treasure at certain stages of production he is very anxious to appear before other owners of commodities as rico hombre whenever he can do so with safety he gilds himself and his house footnote to what extent the inner man of the commodity owner remains unchanged even when he has become civilized and has developed into a, a capitalist is shown by the example of a london representative of a cosmopolitan banking-house who adopted as a fitting coat of arms for his family a one hundred thousand pound bank-note which he had hung up in a glass frame the point here is in the mocking contempt of the note for circulation in the footnote in asia especially in india where unlike under the capitalist system the hoarding of wealth appears not as a subordinate function of the system of production but as an end in itself gold and silver commodities are practically but aesthetic forms of hoards in medieval england gold and silver commodities were considered before the law as mere forms of treasure since their value was but slightly increased by the crude labor spent upon them they were destined to re-enter circulation and their fineness was therefore prescribed in the same manner as that of coin the increasing use of gold and silver as objects of luxury with the growth of wealth is such a simple matter that it was perfectly clear to the ancients footnote see the passage from xenophon quoted below End of footnote. while modern economists have advanced the erroneous proposition that the use of silver and gold articles increases not in proportion to the growth of wealth but in proportion to the fall in value of the precious metals their otherwise accurate references to the use of californian and australian gold are inconclusive since the increased consumption of gold as a raw material does not find justification according to their theory in any corresponding decline in its value from eighteen ten to eighteen thirty in consequence of the struggle of an american colonies against spain and the interruption of mining caused by revolutions the annual average production of precious metals declined by more than one-half the decline of coin in circulation in europe amounted to nearly one-sixth comparing the years eighteen twenty nine and eighteen o nine 
although the quantity produced had thus declined and the cost of production if it had changed at all had increased yet the consumption of precious metals as objects of luxury increased to an extraordinary extent in england during the very war and on the continent after the peace of paris the consumption increased with the general growth of wealth footnote jacob elsie volume two chapter twenty five and twenty six end of footnote it may be stated as a general law that the conversion of gold and silver money into articles of luxury prevails in times of peace while their reconversion into bullion or even coin takes place in stormy periods footnote in times of great agitation and insecurity especially during internal commotions or invasions gold and silver articles are rapidly converted into money whilst during periods of tranquillity and prosperity money is converted into plate and jewellery l c volume two page three fifty seven end of footnote how considerable the proportion is of the gold and silver treasure in the form of articles of luxury to the quantity of precious metals serving as money may be seen from the fact that in eighteen twenty nine the proportion in england according to jacob was two to one and in entire europe and america the precious metals in the form of articles of luxury exceeded those in the form of money by one-fourth we have seen that the circulation of money is but the manifestation of the metamorphoses of commodities or of the form under which the social interchange of matter takes place with the change in the total price of commodities in circulation or in the volume of their simultaneous metamorphoses the rapidity of their change of form in each case being given the total quantity of gold in circulation must always expand or contract that is possible only under the condition that the total quantity of money in the country continually bear a varying ratio to the quantity of money in circulation this condition is met by the process of hoarding with a fall in prices or rise in the rapidity of circulation the hoard reservoirs absorb that part of money which is thrown out of circulation with a rise in price or a decline in the rapidity of circulation the hoards open up and return a part of their contents to the stream of circulation the solidification of circulating money into hoards and the outpouring of hoards into circulation is a constantly oscillating movement in which the prevalence of the one or the other tendency is determined exclusively by fluctuations in the circulation of commodities hoards thus serve as conduits for the supply and withdrawal of money to or from circulation so that every time only that quantity of money circulated as coins which is required by the immediate needs of circulation if the volume of the entire circulation suddenly expands and the fluent unity of sale and purchase assumes such dimensions that the total sum of prices to be realized increases more rapidly than the rapidity of the circulation of money the hoards decrease perceptibly but when the combined movement slackens to an unusual extent or the movement of buying and selling steadies itself the medium of circulation solidifies into money in large measure and the treasure reservoirs fill up far above their average level in countries with an exclusively metallic circulation or where production is at a low stage of development the hordes are endlessly split up and scattered all over the land while in countries where the capitalist system is developed they are concentrated in bank reservoirs hordes are not to be confounded with coin reservoirs which form a constituent part of the total supply of money in circulation while the interaction between hordes and currency implies the decline or rise of its total supply gold and silver commodities form as we have seen both conduits for the withdrawal of precious metals as well as sources of their supply in ordinary times only their former function is of importance to the economy of metallic circulation footnote xenophon de vecte gallibus c four of all operations with which i am acquainted this is the only one in which no sort of jealousy is felt at a further development of the industry the larger the quantity of ore discovered and the greater the amount of silver extracted the greater the number of persons ready to engage in the operation no one when he has got a sufficient furniture for his house dreams of making further purchases on this head but of silver no one ever yet possessed so much that he was forced to cry enough on the contrary if ever anybody does become possessed of an immoderate amount he finds as much pleasure in digging a hole in the ground and hoarding it as an actual employment of it when a state is prosperous there is nothing which people so much desire as silver the men want money to expend on most beautiful armour and fine horses and houses of some and sumptuous paraphernalia of all sorts the women betake themselves to expensive apparel and ornaments of gold or when states are sick either through barrenness of corn and other fruits or through war the demand for current coin is even more imperative whilst the ground lies unproductive to pay for necessities or military aid 
translation by h g dakins london eighteen ninety two volume two revenues page three thirty five to three thirty six aristotle develops in book one chapter nine of his politics the two opposite movements of circulation c m c and m c m calling them economics and chromatistics respectively the two forms are represented by the greek tragedian euripides as sick and right and chiodos prophet in the footnote in the chapter two parts three and three a